Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at the Merchant Gun Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about something that if you saw my tweet, which I think nobody saw. Thanks everyone. Uh, we're, I, I was on Watch Mojo of all places today. They said, what are the most anticipated shows of the twenty of 2020? And I figured, what the hell, I needed something to do while I was killing time before work. And there were three shows on there that one of them I had no idea about. One I had forgotten completely about. And the other I didn't even know like how far in production it was, if it even is in production. But it's slated for 2020, so I'm assuming it's being done because of the way it, it would have to be done. This thing would have to be getting worked on like already. Um, and so I know that I, in my tweet, I said, forget Disney plus, these are three shows that I'm wearing. I'm not dissing Disney plus. I'm wearing my winter soldier shirt right now. I am excited with Falcon and the winter soldier. I'm also really excited that it's on a weekly basis. All the, the, the shows that are going to be on Disney plus are you bingers, but the novelty for me has worn off. Whenever I binge something 95% of the time, I feel like. Empty and hollow inside. Like, just consuming. Just, that's all we do, man. That's all we do. We just suck it all up. Oh, that looked pretty terrible. But that's all we do, man. We are like Fight Club, man. Like Fight Club said, man. We're just a bunch of fucking consumers, man. Just shoving it all in our face as fast as we can. And then, you know, like feeling shitty about it later. So I'm, I'm appreciative that Disney's going to, you know, put it on a weekly basis. It's also really fucking smart for all of us that for people that I don't know if they're doing a free trial or anything, but it'll keep people from like canceling their subscriptions, which is why I, one of the reasons why I can't believe Netflix and Amazon still don't do this and Hulu. Like, if you want people to keep the subscription, you've got to keep the show at a weekly basis because people that's one of the reasons people binge it. As they go, oh, I'm just going to fucking get my subscription, right? My free, free trial. And I'm just going to shove it all into my fucking mouth. And then I'm going to cancel it. And don't pretend like you haven't done it, some of you. Say, I've done it, too. I've done a lot. But the binging days are over. But anyway, we're going to talk about three shows. I didn't really know that much. Of, well, I know about them. <laughs> but I didn't realize that they were coming out in 2020. And the first one is Snowpiercer, the TV series. Now, back in 2013, a little Korean film starring Chris Evans, Tilda Swinton, Ed Harris, Jamie Bell, John Hurt, uh, Octavia Spencer, the guy from Train Spotting who played Spud. I'm sorry that I don't remember your name. He's a really good actor. This movie came out, and it's about global warming tried to be solved, and we fucked it up, and we caused an, another ice age. We're really bad, and it just wiped everybody out. And the only survivors of this are on this crazy speed train that goes all the way around the world and essentially we're waiting for the thaw until you know we can get off the train in the front of the train are the richie riches and in the back of the train are the poorest of the poor running the whole thing and how one day chris evans and company decide to take the train for themselves and it's a fucking awesome movie i like it a lot and some people don't like it which is fine you know you I question your taste, but, you know, taste is relative. It's art. Art is subjective. But I found out that this movie was going to be on TBS of all places. TBS. Sure, they've got Conan. Sure, it was the place that American Dad found another home. Sure, the the, the one with uh, Angie Tribeca. I, I like that show. But for the most part, TBS is a joke for me. Like TNT, they play two-hour movies for four, in four-hour blocks so they can shove all their fucking commercials down their face. And if you don't know where you own those movies, just put the Blu-ray in whenever you see it. And you go, oh, I want to watch Jumanji again. Well, then pull it out of your fucking DVD case and put it in and skip all the goddamn commercials. But somehow TBS got their hands on this. I don't know who would pass on Snowpiercer, the, movie, uh, the TV series, especially when you have Jennifer Connelly, who... And David Diggs from uh, one of the best movies of last year, one of the best performances of last year, uh, 
clip from the movie Blind Spotting. If you haven't seen that movie, check it out. I'm on board. And here's the trailer. You swap out Tilda Swinton for one of the actresses from The Americans, who she's really fantastic, too. She was also on Sneaky Pete, a uh, really fantastic actress. So, like I said, if you don't know the story, uh, I don't really want to spoil too much about it. But, I mean, it's a journey from the back of the train to the front of the train. And it's serialized. It's going to be really interesting how they pull it off. And, but with Jennifer Connelly on board and with David Diggs and knowing the plot already and being greenlit for season two, plus the story that could go on that I wanted to see more of. We don't always have to be on this train is what I'm saying. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm intrigued. I'm very, very intrigued. And I'm very, very excited to see it. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is why. Well, why the last man, really? Um, it's going to be on FX. Why the last man is one of the best comic books I've ever read in my entire life. And I'm glad that it's on FX. They can get away with a lot on FX. But if you're not familiar with why the last man, as they're, and they're calling it why, I don't know why they can't call it the last man. Is it because it has the word man in it? But anyway... <laughs> Seriously, just call it Why the Last Man. What much with the, just the single letter? Oh, God. It's a all-female cast. What's wrong with just leaving the word man in? <laughs> but it's written by... The comic book was written... Look, I, I'm not fucking around, okay? I've got Why the Last Man. Why the Last Man. Hurley was reading it on the beach on Lost, okay? Because Brian K. Vaughan was also kind of a person that was working on Lost for a really long time. For a while, at least. But he's one of the best comic book writers out there right now. If you're not reading Saga, although it's on hiatus, Saga is some the best book that's out there right now. That's probably, you know, this is probably some people's like favorite book of all time. Saga is amazing. It really is. And the cliffhanger that they left us on shows how, you know, the pedigree of Brian K. Vaughan, like how he definitely was not lost, right? And this has been in development hell forever. And I never thought it would get made, but it's finally coming to FX this year, I think. And uh, I have the little piece of paper. Now, Why the Last Man is about York. A guy named York, who is the last man on Earth. Every other man has died. And he also has a monkey. And it's also a man. And it's the mystery of why he's still alive. Uh, and how everybody basically in the world, all these different groups of women have different, I, you know, interest in him. Uh, I don't want to tell too much for people that haven't read the comics, but some people want to kill him. Some people want to use him as a breeder. Some people want to use him for political gains. It's a really, really, really awesome story that covers the whole globe, has love, romance, everything. Plus, it's just, and I saw in the credits, that there's a bunch of guys in the cast. Now, I guess maybe if they go for flashbacks, they could do that. I honestly hope, wish that they wouldn't do that. I hope they don't do it too much because I think that what's great about this is that it's an all-female show with this one guy thrown in. Um, and there are some amazing moments that, that they'll be able to do uh, on the show. The only question I have for this, because Diane Lane's in it, Amber Tamblin's in it. I like I like most of the people in this. My question mark here, where I wrote, um, is Barry Keegan is York. York is a very goofy, fun character who you would be like, you know, it's the joke kind of of the last man on earth would be this kind of magician, jokester kind of guy that doesn't really take that much that seriously until he's forced to live a serious life and, and, and hide himself and be on the run and try to figure out why he's still alive. Barry Keegan, I've seen him in stuff. I liked, uh, you know, the uh, the killing of a sacred deer. And uh, I think he's been in a couple other things that I saw. I, I'm, I'm kind of blanking, but what I remember, and just by looking at him, and I know that, I, you know, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but unless they're I, I've never seen that side of this actor, and I hope I'm wrong like I was with Heath Ledger as the Joker. But right now, that's a big damn question mark because I look at him and I just go, no, 
<laughs> now prove me wrong, Barry. Prove me wrong, because I want to be proven wrong. Sorry, I'm getting so close. Crossed my paper too far away. I really do. I want to be proven wrong. But this is something I've been waiting for for a really, really, really long time. And if they pull it off, and I really think that on FX they could, um, we could be seeing one of the best shows that's been around in a while. Um, the next one, though, and final one, is Invincible. I've been thinking about this being made into a TV show for a while. It's from Robert Kirkman. And one of the things that's great about Invincible is the comic book's over. We don't have – and, yeah, I know Walking Dead's over now, too, but they fucked that up a long time ago, in my opinion. They they messed that up. But with Invincible done in the can, same as Why the Last Man, we have a beginning, we have an end. It's not like fucking Game of Thrones where we've got two more books to come up, you know, left, and a couple of fucking showrunners who are, you know, walking out the door, two doors, one to make a Star Wars movie and the other to make a fucking – what if the South won the Civil War bullshit show that who, – why would anybody want to watch that? Why would anybody want to watch that? Yeah, I want to see what happens if black people were still slaves and a bunch of crackers were running around. Yeah, entertainment. Ooh, yeah. Oh, and the Klan are probably like the heads of state. But Invincible is over. And Invincible is an amazing comic book. Uh, Invincible is a story of Mark Grayson who – his father, who's Invincible Volume 2, his father is this guy named Omni-Man, who's basically Superman. He comes from another planet. Um, he's got, they're called the, what is it, yeah, the Vitramites. He's a Vitramite race. And there's like a bunch of really cool characters like Robot, Duplicate, Rexplode. Uh, God, the, the list is endless. It's kind of like how many, you know, characters are in Spider-Man comics world. Uh, Adam Eve. Um, and how he finds his way into his powers, grows into his powers, finds out things about his father, and it's also very adult. But not so – but not dour like Watchmen, not bleak and, and dark as the boys. It's got moments of darkness. It's got real violence. It shows real consequences to having superpowers, super strength, and the abilities. They pull no punches in the comic. It's very colorful. And the best part about this is, well, first it's on Amazon. You know, Amazon's got the track record of being letting people do what they want. And even in animated form, I think that this would just translate so well to cartoon. And I'm trying to find an example of like how this can be like this is like you know, anime. And Ryan Otley's art is a great template. And I know I use that word template a lot. But Ryan Otley's art as a template for this would just be amazing. And all the characters are all so imaginative. Look at these different characters that they have in here. Let me, let me pass it over here. All the different ways to do this. It makes – it's just like, you know, a unique look at, like, the way Marvel does things and uh, takes it a different step. And Mark Grayson's story is kind of universal. And, like, look at this. If you think that there's not, like, violence in this, look at what Omni-Man does to this dude. Sport. Well, I do think that they're still going to make Die, Die, Die into a show. And also, hopefully, I can uh, continue with the comic. It's been, like, uh, on hiatus for a while. Invincible is going to be an amazing animated show. Oh, my God. So those are the three shows right now that I am looking forward to most, besides shows like Better Call Saul, which I'm always going to be excited about, and a bunch of the Disney Plus stuff. But I'm talking about stuff that, you know, is coming out of left field, stuff that you might not know about. And that's where I live. I, and that's where I like my channel to do. I would much rather cover these shows than necessarily, you know, do an episode to episode, uh, you know, God, how many Marvel shows are there going to be and how many people are going to be reviewing them? And so I'm more excited to do these. So let me know what you guys think of Invincible, Why the Last Man, and Snowfish as a TV series in the comment section. Are you as excited as I am? If not, you know, tell me why. Uh, otherwise, if you like this video, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit that bell for all notifications. We are at 909 subscribers unless somebody has completely bailed on me. And more people have left the channel. I don't know. It keeps going back and forth. Um, 
Otherwise, uh, you can find me on Twitter at yesh8, that is Y-E-S-S-H-H-8, or you can just look up Rob Stone, a.k.a. Smirking Gun Reviews on Twitter. You can find me there. Um, otherwise, we will be back. We're going to be doing X-Men, the animated series, Dark Phoenix Part 2. That should also be up uh, for sometime tomorrow. I'm thinking this might be up sometime tonight. Otherwise, it'll be up also Saturday or Friday morning as well. So this is Robert Smirking Gun Reviews saying have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you next time.